what's up? I am simple, and this is my ICUP deck. Uh, I know, funny name, right? So funny, super clever, like top-notch comedy, I'm sure. Gold, anyway. So the reason why it's ICUP, quick explanation. Before the positioning patch, and I didn't think this far ahead, before the positioning patch, I played a variation of spot of this deck, of the Spies deck, um, and I called it ICU. I put very little thought into it. Uh, then the positioning patch hit, and I was like, hey, I can make top quality comedy joke by putting the P in there for positioning. So ICUP, that's it, that's the joke. So the positioning patch did a lot of really great things for Spice. Before I played this deck a lot and I, I averaged around 3K MMR with it, um, I got it to about 3.7K at one point, but I quickly dropped back down. So the deck was not very strong by any means and the main issue was RNG the RNG of emissaries in particular, because emissaries before they would just pull whatever was on top of the deck, whatever bronze card was on the, on top of the deck, I should say. And that was a big issue. And there's a there's another really big issue with that, which is that before a brigade would not be buffed by spies that you played after a brigade was played. So if you played a brigade and then you started playing spies, then that brigade did not receive buffs for those spies that you played after it was on the field. Which is really bad because you could play an emissary and it would pull a brigade and then suddenly you've got like a nine strength brigade because you only have one spy in the field with that emissary and that brigade is not going to get any stronger than nine strength because remember before the positioning patch they gained three strength for every spying unit rather than two now um so the positioning patch did a great thing for emissaries by making them way less rng so now you get to choose between two of the top bronze units in your deck um so the two top bronze units you get to see them both and you get to play one of them and then it shuffles the other one back in uh which is important to to understand that it shuffles the other card back in your deck so you don't actually know where it's going um so just be aware of that but now it's okay for you to emissary out a brigade early because it's it's okay to play brigades early now uh, whereas before it wasn't really okay because the strength potential of the deck would fall off if you had a bunch of brigades out and they were very weak because uh, you emissaried them all and you didn't have that many spies out when you played them. So uh, now that's not an issue. However, that does raise a new issue where now the big change to brigade was that now they gain two strength, which is a bit of a nerf, but it's a huge, it's a company with a huge buff, meaning, or in that now you can play spies after you play brigade, which is great because uh, they, they get buffed for spies that are on the field and for spies that you play after they're on the field, which is amazing. But it does run into one huge problem, which is Gigni. And we, I have an answer to that. Um, but the Gigni problem is if you play, no matter when you play your brigade, they're always going to end up being the same strength, assuming that there's a, the same amount of spies on the field whenever you play brigade. And the way you go around that is by using Nausicaa Brigade, which Nausicaa Brigade serve two functions one is to stagger your brigade so that you can't get gigneed the other function is to kill kill your spies emissary mainly so that you can vic medic them and gain insane deck thinning usually in the first or second round um so that's really cool because you can kill your emissary which means that, so you play, let's say you Emissary and you have a Brigade on the field. So this this Brigade is 8 Strength. Now if you play another Brigade, it's also going to be 8 Strength, which is bad. Um, so you kill your Emissary with your Nausicaa Brigade. This guy is still 8 Strength. Then you res the Emissary with the Vic Medic, and he pulls another Brigade. So the Emissary has buffed this guy to 10 Strength now because you played it twice. And you play a another brigade with that emissary and now this guy is eight strength so eight strength ten strength now you have a staggered brigade and you don't have to worry about gigney so that's that's a lot of a lot of value coming from the nazi brigade not only that the gain four strength whenever they kill a spy which is really cool um so very good card very cool interactions here very good buffs to the spies deck in general um if you haven't watched my other deck or my other deck guide i We'll go over it briefly because it's no longer relevant because it was before the positioning patch. But a lot of it was still relevant. So if you do want to watch it, it's not going to hurt you. But So the main the main idea of this deck is 
the operator operator cantarella combo which is why we have stefan and renew in our deck both of these cards because having the ability to renew stefan is incredibly valuable also if you if you have to renew vilgaforts it's not it's not necessarily bad all the time so it's not terrible to renew vilgaforts and then uh you will almost never renew letho but i guess maybe if you defensive letho then you can renew him in the future however like I think it's really okay for Renew to be in uh, Nilfgaard decks specifically because you can argue that Renew will end up dead in a lot of games, which it does. That's a fair argument. But in Nilfgaard, you usually have an opportunity to mill it away um, with your Nilfgaard passive. So having Renew in your deck, I think, is is m w way more justifiable in a Nilfgaard deck than in other decks. So Renew is great because because you can you have a ton of control with Stefan and even more control if you can Stefan twice which this deck is very based around combos. Well, I'll talk about the Cantarella combo here in a second, but um, so we've got we've got the Letho combo, which is uh, you Letho units on their side, which he banishes them and gains their strength as base strength. And then you can debomb Letho or you can deshackle Letho to make him not gold anymore. And you can pull him back with Calviot or Treason, which is huge. It's a huge strength swing. Letho is incredibly powerful and underestimated in my opinion. So that's that's, one gigantic combo the other gigantic combo which is even more important than letho i would i would argue because it can uh it gives you ton of control of your deck and it gives you the ability to pull letho is uh operator cantarella decoy what that does is that gives you three cantarellas and cantarellas are huge for you because not only do they they deck them by potentially two cards if you think about it because the way that cantarella works is you play them you play a Cantarella, and then you get to look at a card. Now you can keep that card, or you can place that card on the bottom of your deck, which means that you probably won't see that card again in the future if you place it on the bottom of your deck. That's kind of like deck thinning. That's that's amazing because you can you can see if a card if a card is dead in a matchup, you can put it on the bottom, or if you pull Roach for example, you can put it on the bottom. So you're never gonna have to see that card again. That's deck thinning, and then you also get if you do put a card on the bottom of your deck, you get another card. So you potentially deck them by two with every Cantarella play, which uh, not saying that you ever will, but if you bottom deck three times with Cantarella because you have two Cantarellas with Operator and then you decoy the Cantarella that they play, you, that's like six, six ways or six different deck thinning mechanics that you, that you potentially have. And it gives you a ton of control over your deck, which is really cool. But not just that. Cantarella is a huge shrink swing, so every Cantarella buffs Imperial Brigade if you have them. And um, I will give you a number, and I'll explain it. It's 60 strength swing, three Cantarellas with no, I'm not talking about any other spies, three Cantarellas, just those three, they're 60 strength swing. And what that means is that your opponent has to be 60 strength above you in order for them to win around if you Calvi it. I hope that makes sense. Um, and I'll explain the math. So Cantarella loses six strength whenever you pull her back to your side. So if you use Treason, she'll lose six strength. If you use Calviot to pull her back, she lo she'll lose six strength. Which, the way that you calculate strength swing is by you s subtract what they lose and you add what you gain. So they're losing 12 strength because you're pulling 12 away from them. And then you're gaining six strength because she loses six strength, right? So each of these Cantarellas is 18 strength. So there's gonna be two 18 strength Cantarellas. Um, and then whenever you decoy the Cantarella that they play, it's gonna be 15 strength on their side and nine strength on your side. So 15 minus six is nine. So they, they lose 15 strength and you gain nine strength. So you add, so you add 24 plus 36, that's 60. It's not a very hard number to remember, but it's so if you have three cantarellas on their side just know that they need 60 strength with those cantarellas um in order to beat you in that round if you calvi it so that's huge it's a huge strength swing and it's so much deck control and it's really cool and amazing um i, I like this deck a ton uh, i i'm gonna i mentioned d bomb and i mentioned d shackle but the reason why they're both in my deck uh mainly is because of Bork, things like Bork and Combi, Deshackle is incredibly useful. However, Deshackle is never dead in this deck because if they end up not playing Bork or not playing Combi, you can always Deshackle Cantarella. And people don't understand this yet, and 
It's funny because Deshackling Cantarella is actually a buff unless you're playing against a weather, um, a weather deck because what Deshackle does is it does not get rid of the spying token. Is it, is it a token? I'm not sure. It does not get rid of Disloyal in a card, which people imagine that it does. They have no reason to think that, I don't think, but they imagine that it does, and sometimes people will deshackle your Cantarella, which is a positive for you, because they no longer, Cantarella will no longer lose six strength whenever you pull her if she's deshackled, because her ability is no longer active, which means that instead of being 18 strength, like I described before, suddenly Cantarella is a 24 strength swing, which is so good. So I laugh every time somebody tries to deshackle my Cantarella, but that also means that we can incorporate a deshackle into our deck without the fear of this being a dead card. Um, there are obviously situations where maybe you pulled your Cantarella's last round and you top deck uh, deshackle and you have nothing to use it on. But in in a lot of cases, conceivably, if you have nothing to use deshackle on in that matchup, you can use it on a Cantarella for for major major gains here. Um, so yeah, so that's the deck. I I tried to talk pretty fast. I didn't want to make this super long video. And I don't really plan on putting gameplay behind it either. So um, hopefully hopefully everything gets across. If you want to see me play the deck, you can watch my stream and um, ask me to play the deck. And I'll probably comply. I really enjoy playing this deck. There's, there's one huge issue with this deck right now, which is why it's not 100% um, competitive. Like I said before, I, it was like hovering around 3k in my hands before the patch. The, after the patch hit... I got to 4k with this deck. I played this deck from around 3k to 4k. Um, I've gotten up to 4.3k with this deck. So so this is like a 4k deck. Assuming you don't just play against this major issue. And I will tell you, I'll, I'll talk about this because it's so frustrating to me that it even exists as a mechanic. Um, but it could just be an oversight. And I hope it is an oversight and I hope it's changed in the future. But the way that this deck is or the reason why this deck is not viable in a purely competitive sense is because monster consume the archetype hard counters this deck most monster consume lists run Ek ekimara and like all of them run karen so they have one very easy win condition which is to ekimara cantarellas so if you if you use the cantarella combo against them they're going to ekimara your cantarellas which is really bad because like i said before cantarellas are a 60 strength swing and they're denying that or they can k-run a k-run your cantarellas and it's it's really bad and really difficult to play against um and i i personally don't believe that consume should be able to consume disloyal units for that reason because it makes this deck basically unplayable against that archetype but you can you can try to play it against that archetype and i encourage you not to just give up immediately which i've done before <laughs> at the moment i see monster consume um but outside of that it's a fun deck i encourage you to play it hopefully hopefully in the future monster consume won't be able to to eat cantarellas at least or a chimera won't be able to eat disloyal units at least Karen. anyway so yeah so i hope you enjoy the deck uh, and uh, I, that's I, that's basically all I have to say. I hope you have a great day, and uh, thanks for watching.